Hello everyone, welcome back to Six Days of Sacrifice. I've got some tea here and I'm ready for some sacrificing. Alright, it's day two. Let's see what's going on. Let's look around here first, look at this locker. Hmm. I'm guessing the locker is... Locked. It won't open. Almost like something's holding it shut from inside. From inside, really? Do you mean like a lock or something? Huh. That's weird. There's a weird kind of locking mechanism on it I've never seen before. Oh. Hmm. I wonder what it needs to be unlocked. They don't appear to have been designed with comfort in mind at all. Yep, bunks usually aren't. I'm not sleepy enough. Wait, where does that door go? I know where that one leads. That one leads outside, but where does that door go? Let's find out. Mm -hmm. What the f- Hello? Who are you? Uh... I'm not going to hurt you. Is your mother around? Or your father? Uh, my god, your eyes. What happened to your eyes? <laughs> ah, good. You're up. We can discuss the plan. Plan? The door has now been unlocked. Our next move will be to take Canning hostage. Again? If at first you don't succeed. His door is being guarded by the Trilby Guard. The Trilby Guard. <laughs> it will be your task to distract him. Why me? The threat of physical violence must be made to get Canning under control. You obviously cannot make this threat, so it has to be me. All you have to do is lure the guard away from the main corridor, giving me the chance to slip in. How will you know when the coast is clear? Do you have a cell phone? Of course. Take my number. We can't reach the outside world, but we should be able to make calls within the complex. Call when you've achieved your objective, or if there are points you wish to discuss. Okay. I'll give you Janine's number, too. I'm sure you still have many questions for us both. Click on phone in the top menu, uh, uh, okay. Wait, I'm sorry, our phones can't... Our phones don't have a signal because they can't reach the outside world. I'm not a master on... Like, I'm not an expert on how phones work, but I'm pretty sure if you don't have a signal, you can't call anyone even if they're a foot away from you. Because wouldn't the signal need to go all the way to the satellites and then back down? It doesn't just, like, go over two feet. Anyway, whatever. Doesn't matter very much. Unimportant. So yes, the dreams have started. Every single game in the Chozo Mythos, whoever you've been playing as, you've always had dreams, haven't you? Disturbing dreams. Hmm. It's the... the taint from the other world. Infecting our minds. There's a post-it note on here. There's a perfectly ordinary post-it note stuck to the locker door. What does it say? Instructions for opening locker. You only have to ask. Okay, so is it voice activated? It sounds like it's voice activated. Oh, wait, what? You only have to ask. Hmm. Please? I don't have enough letters there to spell please. I could spell pliz with two z's. Pliz tanks you for opening. Hmm. Alright, so four letter combination. You only have to ask. Alright, I'll revisit that at some point. I'm sure. Cultist nighttime reading, possibly. 
I'll add it to my journal. Twice did the 28th day of the seventh month pass and... <laughs> I'm sorry, let me read that again. Twice did the 28th day of the seventh month pass... What? Does that mean two years? Or like going back in time and then going back to the seventh month again? I... Anyway, and the prince gazed with great concern upon the land of technology as the carving of the slave passed through the hands of a great many ignorant men of technology. But the king would not let him take his vengeance. For he said, The guide seeks the carving of the slave, and it is through this desire he shall fulfill his destiny. It will not be long before the guide learns that his duty has not yet been completed, and then he shall do as I have foreseen. The guide. Who is the guide? I'm just thinking, could that be the caretaker? But then again, his name is the caretaker, so maybe he's not the guide. Or maybe he's the caretaker and the guide. Or maybe the caretaker is just, uh... An identity he's trying to take on to avoid the fact that he's the guide. I don't know. Seek the carving of the slave. Well, we know what that is. That's the, the idol that housed the spirit of the kid whose name I forgot... Matthew is the son? What was the kid's name? I don't remember. Anyway. And as the king said it, so was it so. For the bridge keeper did touch one of the ignorant men, and by their conjoined hands was the thief wife thrown down, and truly did she know the name of the king. The thief wife. Well, Trilby is the gentleman thief. Is that who they're talking about? But he doesn't have a wife. Or at least he didn't last time I saw him. And with this act, the guide said, I see. I see you know, Bridgekeeper. I have found you, and I have not forgotten. And he came to the tree that was the prince's soul, for it was here that the carving of the slave had been brought. Be damned if I know what any of that means. The carving from the slave has been brought to the tree where the prince's soul was, right? I remember the tree. I remember that place. Wait a minute. Is the guide Trilby? Hold on. Let me read that again and assume it's Trilby. Maybe that's talking about... I mean, the... The idol was brought to the tree in the last game that I played. Okay. Right, so the carving right was passing down for many hands. Uh-huh. The guide seeks the carving of... The yeah, that is Trilby, isn't it? The guide seeks the carving of the slave. And it's through this desire he shall fulfill his destiny. Right, I had a destiny. It will not be long before the guy, Trilby, learns that his duty has not yet been completed and that he shall do as I have foreseen. Except that, you know, I didn't. Hmm. I'm not sure the thief wife is, though. I have found you and I have not forgotten. That's the guide saying that. If that's Trilby, that's Trilby saying that. I think that's Trilby. What do you think the chances are that I can get through day two? Oh, hello. What do you think the chances are that I can get through day two without using a walkthrough? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it'll happen. I guess this is where people sit down to eat, talk about the sorts of things cultists talk about. What would cultists talk about? Sacrifices? Blood? Murder? Nah, they'd probably just discuss the latest movie they saw. How's the weather, John? Oh, pretty good. See anything good lately? Yeah, I saw blah, 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 blah. So the cultists actually eat. That's actually reassuring. <laughs> At least they're human. I don't have anything to cook. Fair enough. Ooh, there's a note. 
I like notes. I don't like these kinds of notes, though. They're boring. Book of Prayers 2-7. Why is there a ratio in this? 2-7. 2 to 7. Why? Why? The, bo <laughs> the body is the physical form. It is the sum of what time has made it to be, and so it is of the past. The mind is sharp and logical. It concerns itself with the here and now, and so it is of the present. That doesn't make any sense. The soul is love and hope. It is the dreams of what is to come, and so it is of the future. Body, mind, soul, past, present, future. We give thanks for them all in the name of the king. Well, that was a load of bullshit. Anyway, let's see if there's something to eat. Either it's locked or the door's stuck. Is the fucking refrigerator stuck? What does this require a password to? Like a 20-digit combination? It's certainly big enough to hold food for quite a few people. Let's look at it closer with your lens. Ooh, aww. What the fuck is this symbol about? That's the symbol that was in the main menu. Alright, before I talk to Janine, let's look around. I think it's a prayer cushion for kneeling. Right, I guess that's where the cultists celebrate the symbol of... Pain and agony? Is that supposed to represent Chozo's eye? I don't know. I'm not sure if I should be praying to someone yet. Yeah, I don't think so. Four triangles forming a star, contained in a circle. I saw this in Canning's office. Could it be the symbol of the order? It's just paint. At least, I hope so. I love that when you look at her, he says, I'm pretty sure it's Janine, whatever her last name is, the magazine journalist. He's not sure? Like, I'm pretty sure, but, you know, maybe it's someone else, like her twin or something. Okay, let me see if I can pronounce her last name. Janine... Well, that's not that hard. Or Zachowski. It looks like a mess if you just glance at it, but yeah, if you actually look at it, or Zachowski. Janine or Zachowski, okay. I was going to grab her again. Don't grab NPCs. You talk to them. Don't grab them. Janine? Yes? Oh, I got... That's a lot of options. <laughs> what do you think we should do now? I'm not sure. Maybe you should ask Sam. Will you be helping us take Canning hostage? I'm sorry. I... I can't. I don't think I could face... Him... I can't even bear being in the same room. Why? I... I don't know. It's like... The fear comes out of nowhere. Like a punch in the stomach. Who are you so afraid of, Janine? Him. The... The one who's out there. I don't want to talk about it. So, you were the one who sent the tip? Yeah. A week ago, when I found this place, I sent the tip straight to the police. Minutes later, they caught me and threw me in the cell. I was expecting them to send a SWAT team or something. No offense. Real life doesn't work like that. They can't send in the guns just because an anonymous person says there's an unregistered basement extension. <laughs> Indeed. Sending a building inspector was pretty much all they could have done legally. I guess you can blame me for getting you in this mess, huh? I'm really sorry. You weren't the one who pushed me down an elevator shaft. But I can't ignore the fact that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, so... <clears throat> I'm just kidding, you're alright, Janine. What do you make of Dr. Hardy? I probably don't... I probably don't know much more than you do. She was already in the cell when they threw me in here. And yes, I've asked her many times what kind of work she was doing for the cult. And no, she wouldn't tell me, either. If you want to find out more, you'll have to get it from the horse's mouth. Do you think it's alright to trust her? She's got no more love for the cult than us. 
I mean, if she is secretly still working for them, then she's the most convincing actress in the world. Tell me about Trilby. The character? Well, he was the main character in a bunch of horror movie serials, which were based on a series of novels from the early 21st century. But someone sent me some rare old newspapers, and they su suggest Trilby was a real person. Really? He was a cat burglar, and the original master thief. Finally arrested around the mid-1990s. The story goes that he joined some secret government agency. He did! He did! And they encouraged the novelist to fictionalize Trilby so that people would eventually forget he was ever real. <laughs> That's brilliant! And I'll tell you something else. There was a photograph in the newspaper. That guy out there? Canning's guard? Looks exactly like the real Trilby. You think he could be the same guy? Of course not. He'd be over 200 years old by now. But the resemblance is really creepy. Yeah, okay, there's something more to this. This whole Trilby thing. I was thinking at first that it might just be like a reference to him or something. Or just kind of a joke. No, there's something to this. There's something going on. Are these like fucking Trilby clones? Is there multiple ones of them? Because the first guy that died to the tall man looked also like Trilby. Something's going on. I wonder if it might actually be Trilby. But why would it be Trilby? How did Trilby end up here in the freaking future? Then again, why is there a gigantic eye called Chosa that's trying to come in from the other realm to inflict pain upon the world? So, you know, it's not that unbelievable. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, something's going on with that. I had such a horrible nightmare. Better get used to it. There's something about this place. Something in the air, maybe. But I haven't slept well since day one. There was this little kid. And a welding mask. Welding mask? I've had dreams about those, too. How can we both be dreaming about welding masks? Psychic powers? Be serious. My granny always used to say I was a little bit sensitive. Sure. Well, no use asking about Sam, she's right outside, so that's all I wanted. I just had an idea, by the way. Didn't the note say all I have to do is ask, so if it's four letters, why don't I just say... Open. There. Oh, open. I'm assuming it would automatically work if that did it. Does it save the position? Oh! <laughs> it actually worked. Oh my god, I solved a puzzle without using a walkthrough! Oh my god. Oh my god, this is the best day ever. I'm so happy. Okay. What uh, goodies have I unlocked? What is that? Get out of the way, you stupid person. Clothes? And a keycard. I guess these are the civilian clothes belonging to one of the cultists. Can't find them use for them. Alright, let's grab that keycard. It's an object like a cash card with a magnetic strip. Such as a keycard. There's <laughs> a magnetic swipe uh, swipe card with the word hub printed on it. Okay, so that's the yeah, that's the key card. Now I need the password, the four digit password. To get into the hub. So, that's half of it. Alright, um, let's take a look outside before I talk to Sam. Hmm, should probably save it. Before terrible things happen. 
Oh, hi. Get the fuck away from me. Whoa, he actually follows me? What is he doing? Got you. Okay. Oh, wait, what? Oh. Um. Right, I forgot. We kind of escaped. I... Wait. How much of a prisoner are we? We kind of escaped and then we locked ourselves in and then the lock automatically went away. Um. I don't know what the fuck is happening, but hold on. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do that or what. Like, but if the lock automatically went away, why isn't he just looking around for us? Why is he just waiting in the hall? I, I have no idea. Anyway. Well, before going over there, let's... Go around here. You know, I could try putting the key card in. Yeah, what the hell, why not? It's not gonna do anything, but... Whoa. Never mind, it did do something. It must be one of the unlocking mechanisms for the blast door. Oh, there's, yeah, there's a panel. Okay, so the keycard unlocks another thing we need to solve, and then the numbers over here on the keypad unlock another thing we probably need to solve. A slightly indented panel in the wall. What is this? It's so stiff with rust it'll take two hands to turn it. That's not going to happen while I'm in plaster. Fair enough. Alright, I don't think I ever got to go in here. It won't open, must be a security lock. Ah, damn it. This is the security room? Oh, there we go. Okay. I think it's a security monitor, but it's showing nothing but snow. It's a touchscreen control panel, probably for the monitoring system. Yeah. Let's see if we can do something with it. The screen seems to be locked out. I can't access any functions. Hmm. Alright, this fuse box supplies the power to somewhere. I'd have to follow it. It's a barrel of something. It smells like petrol. Ooh, that could be exploited somehow. What possible use could I have for it? A fuse box? This place must have its own generator. The technology is really antiquated. I better not mess with electrics without a good reason. It could be dangerous. It won't open. There's a security lock requiring high clearance. Right. There's a corpse in here. Um... Is that a cloud of flies? No, it says disturbance. What the fuck? Oh god, it's some kind of ancient skeleton. And dressed in the remnants of an anorak. There's a huge hole in the back of its skull, too. Wait, the remnants of an anorak? I recognize that word, anorak. That was in one of the previous games, someone wearing an anorak, right? Who the hell was it? Anorak, anorak. I don't remember who. And it was presumably shot in the back of the head. Or they were shot in the back of the head. I just called it an it. I'm sorry, corpse. Hmm. I can't remember. Someone was wearing an anorak, though. Hold on, what's up with this disturbance? Some kind of manifestation hovering above the ground. It looks so strange to my eyes, like a black hole in the air itself. God, I don't think I could touch it. I don't think it's really there. Okay, good. Let's not touch it. Let's touch the corpse, though. I couldn't bring myself to touch it. Let's not touch the corpse. Let's go in here. Right, well, it's not going to be anything new in here. I could put up a privacy screen. That would help nothing at all. It was locked, right? No, no. Full of medical supplies I have no use for. What if I look at the disturbance a little bit closer? I guess not. Oh, 
Oh, right. Okay. He's gonna come after me, so I need to call Janine. Or not Janine, uh, Sam. So do I just go into a random room? Or if he's gonna keep chasing me into a room? Hmm. Maybe I'm supposed to get caught. Because as soon as I get caught, I could just call her. And she could let me out, presumably. Although, I'd rather not get caught. Anyway, let's save again, and let's try it. Alright, come on, Trilby. See if he comes in. I don't know. Alright, he hasn't come in. Cool. Let's call. No. I'm Dr. Hardy. Yes, Mr. DeCabe. Go ahead. I got the guard away from the door. You're sure? Excellent. Meet me outside the office door. What are you playing at, DeCabe? What, is he not actually gone? He's still there. You must find a way to remove him on a more permanent basis. Okay. Um. Can I call her while he's chasing me? More permanent basis. He can outwalk me, can't he? Actually, maybe he can. Maybe he can. I'm not sure. Alright, let's call her really quickly. <laughs> He's just waiting behind me. Um, <laughs> He's right behind my back. I'm like, hey, I, I got the guard away from the door. Go, quickly, go. She's going to say he's still there. No, he's not there. Trust me, I know because he's touching my hand. We're holding hands right now. <laughs> okay. <gasps> Let's see what happens here. We'll see about your friends soon enough. Right. Looks like a handwritten memo held in place with tape. I foresee some difficulty in doing that. What do you mean? Just phase your hand through the door. You again. A destiny calls. What the hell? Okay, so... He saves me. He's my guardian... Monk. Time-traveling monk. Does he travel through time? He probably travels through time. Alright, I need to remove him on a more permanent basis. More permanent basis. Okay. Mm. Right, well, nothing I have on me would actually do anything. I have a lens, a phone, and that's it. Let's just keep walking. Uh, hobble your way to victory. No, don't stop. Come on, come on. Is he gonna keep chasing me? Ah, he doesn't keep chasing me, does he? Alright, well, any ideas? Hmm. Is there something I'm supposed to be doing? Of course there is. You're supposed to be getting the Trilby Guard away from Canning's office door. And preferably out of the main corridor altogether. Right. I tried leaving the main corridor, though, and he didn't seem to follow me. Tell me about the extent of my injuries. Your neck broke, on impact. If I hadn't gotten you into a brace before you regained consciousness, and if you had tried to move, you would be dead. You landed on your left side, so your left elbow and humerus are shattered, as is your left kneecap. 
Oh god. There's also a hairline fracture in your skull. No more, please. I get the picture. Hey, you asked. In fact, you may have terrible internal bleeding and are going to die any minute. What kind of work were you doing for the Order? She's not going to answer. I told you I'm not prepared to reveal that. I doubt I will change my mind anytime soon. At least tell me what kind of scientist you are. I told you it would probably go over your head. Try me. <sighs> okay. I'm a biochemist. I was recruited straight out of university by a medical research company. But I was let go after a couple of years. Why? A difference of opinion. I believe a scientist has to be morally flexible in the name of progress. The company ethics committee didn't agree. Please don't ask me to give any further details. Well, might as well keep prodding her. Why not? Why are you being so secretive? We might not even get out of this situation alive. Then I guess I'm more of an optimist than you. Personally, I'm in no hurry to die or take part in whatever the Order have planned for us. And when I escape, I'd rather the specter of this place did not follow me. <laughs> Good luck with that. Who do you think the man in red is? I honestly have no idea. Until his intervention yesterday, I'd never seen him before. He seems to be on our side, don't you think? So it appeared. But I'd consider it unwise to trust him implicitly. Perhaps his interests only temporarily coincide with ours. Yes. I'm worried about Janine. Why? She said she was too afraid to come out and help us. I agree, it's strange. She seemed to have rather indomitable spunk when we were in the cell. All I can think of is that his place is, this place is starting to get to her. Isolation and imprisonment can do strange things to a person. I think I understand. I saw the man in red again. He released me from the holding cell. So he knows the order's security codes. No, I think... I think he teleported me. That's absurd. I swear! There was a flash and the next thing I knew I was in the medical storage room. But if he can teleport people at will, why does he not teleport us out of the complex altogether? If what you say is true, it raises many unsettling questions. I fear this man may have his own agenda and probably not a benevolent one. But he set me free. That's a good point. If he can just teleport us, why didn't he just teleport us out? That means he wants us here. He wants us to be able to do something for him or something that benefits his interests. And he needs us free for that, but he doesn't want us to escape, because he needs us to do something. Hmm. Hmm, okay. Finally get to read this. I'll add it to my journal. Canning. Ensure that the prisoners remain sealed in the holding cell for at least six days. After this, it will no longer matter. Do not fail. Canning. This is your chance to redeem yourself for the crime of allowing the Orzachowski woman to explore the complex unsupervised. I wonder if there's a way to get the Trilby guard in this room. I have literally no idea how to open it. Huh. It's big. It's big, heavy, metal, and electronic. God knows how Sam and Janine got through this. Yeah, how the freaking hell did they get out? Maybe they were teleported too. Oh, you know what they did? They probably did slash stuck. Yeah, that's how they got out. Oh, 
All right, come on, follow me. Follow me here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Why doesn't he follow me here? This is just a continuation of the hallway. So why would he not follow me? Oh no, I think I'm gonna get stuck. Hey, let's see where this power goes, huh? I think, is that the power line? That might be the power line. Yeah. Of course it's still empty. Examine it, no. Well, I can try calling... Janine, I guess. Yeah, it's just the same thing as if you went up to talk to them. It's the same dialogue tree. Have you seen Sam? I think she's in sleep. Yeah, alright. She has no idea. Whoops. Yeah, I don't know. He won't follow me into these rooms. He won't follow me into the next hallway, and Sam wants me to get him out of the main hallway. Just let him catch me again. Wow, you're really bad at moving, Trilby. What if I go into the door behind him? Okay, yeah, it's not gonna work. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What if I... No, that's not going to work. I'm going to try going in here, but he's not going to follow me. It doesn't follow me into rooms. Why doesn't he follow me into rooms? I mean, you're chasing down a guy you want to find, and you see him go through a door. Why wouldn't you go through it, too? Hi. Take me away. Uh... There, okay, he finally got me. Do I have any way of keeping the door from opening? Like, if I could lock the door shut, I could prevent him from being able to get out, and we'd both be stuck in here. What if I, like... Walk over the disturbance. I guess I can. Hmm. Talk with it? Alright. I have no idea, really. I mean, if he'd actually followed me properly, I would have some ideas, but since he doesn't, how can I get him out of the main hall? I'm seriously thinking locking him inside of the cell, or inside of the cell room. Could work, but I don't know how to do that. I don't have anything on me that could do that. Hold on, let me go try something. Let me see if I can get my keycard back. Alright, so I don't get it back, do I? No. Because I know there's a door that said it required, a, like, high access. I was thinking maybe that key card would work in there too, but no. Preferably out of the main corridor altogether. The only room he'll follow me into 
well, not really following me into, he's guiding me into the cells. But I don't have any control, it just, it's a cutscene, I can't do anything until he leaves. So what could I possibly do? I think that's the power line, so I think it powers this door. But I don't have the tools to mess with the electrical system. Nor do I have any source of flame or anything like that to blow up this barrel if I needed to. And I can't touch this thing. I don't think I'm meant to mess with this yet. And that's the high security clearance door, right? And I can't push it. Look closer at the snow. Well, there's nothing on the screen right now I'm, I'm having particular trouble seeing. Hmm, that suggests that perhaps later I will actually use that magnifying thing on that screen. Right. I have no idea. I still have no idea. Like, I'm out of ideas. Talk to him. Nope. You won't follow me down the corridor. He just won't. I think I'm gonna have to use a walkthrough. Damn it, I want to get through one of these Chozo games though using a walkthrough. But I don't think it's to be. Yeah, he won't follow me down the corridor, he won't follow me into any room except the cell room, which he doesn't follow me into. He puts me into it, and I don't have any control over anything while that's happening, so there's no way I can lock him inside through my actions. It'd have to be something pre-planned. I have no idea how to do that. I don't think I can mess with the electrics yet. I don't have anything on me that's worth a damn. There's nothing more I can pick out of the locker, is there? Just some clothes. Which he refuses to take because they're useless. Hm. What do you bet it's some ridiculous hotspot thing? Well, not a hotspot, but like one of those things where you're supposed to stand in an invisible script trigger position, just like the the second game and trying to stand in the shadow to hit that guy over the head. If that is it, then what could it be? I could stand here. <laughs> the hell would that accomplish? Excuse me. Surely he will lose track of me. Damn, it didn't work. I do have a second to, like, do stuff here before the guy shows up, but there's, like, nothing to interact with except the door. I mean, I could call her right now, but he's back in the hallway, so... Wait, that just say he d doesn't have a signal? I think it just said he doesn't have a signal.
Yeah, I'm just gonna use a walkthrough. Okay, and as pretty much always, I'm glad I looked at a walkthrough because the solution makes no sense at all. Like, literally, after reading the solution, I still don't understand. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, I need to find the room with the body. Is it this one? I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. Okay, so apparently you go and get them, and then you just go into that room, and then there's a cutscene, and then everything is magically fine. Be damned if I know why, though. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Wait. What the hell is that? <laughs> the hotel. Oh god, let me out. That is Trilby. That is Trilby. What the hell? It's like the specter of Trilby or something. He doesn't seem to quite remember, or... I don't know. Anyway... Yeah, that's a wretchedly designed puzzle. I didn't think to bring him into that room because he literally would not follow me into any room. So it's it's another case of those invisible script triggers where you go to the one place where it works and nowhere else does anything else happen to suggest that you can even do such an action. I mean, for God's sakes, he wouldn't even follow me down the hallway. And he wouldn't follow me into any other, any other room. That made no sense at all. Anyway. Alright, I think I've dealt with him. Oh god, what the hell was that? Fuck, we're switching into the other realm. In fact, it looks like we're midway, th partway through switching to the other realm. Father. I'm not sure what that says, shit. Uh, why is she staring at the wall? Oops. Ready? As I'll ever be. Let's do this, then. Dr. Hardy? Yes. The guard's dead. He's dead because of me. You killed him? I led him to a monster. It tore him to shreds. It couldn't have been helped. A man died because of my actions. You must not agonize over every little thing. If you did, you'd go insane. Do you call it little? No, of course not. We're wasting time. Come on. Again, Dr. Hardy. Aren't you tired of this yet? Your pet guard won't be able to help you this time, Canning. My pet? I would say he was as much yours as mine, wouldn't you? Shut up. Has she told you about the work she was doing for us, sir? Uh, I said shut up. Get moving. And no funny business or you get a bullet in the leg to help you along. Go on, in. Okay, Canning. You're completely at our mercy, and you're going to tell us exactly what we want to know, understand? First and foremost, how do we call the elevator? You don't. The one in the main corridor can only be called from an upper floor by a high-ranking acolyte. Looks like we'll have to get used to each other, my dear. There's got to be another way up. Oh, there is. It's in the hub. But you'll never get past the security locks to open the blast doors. We will. Because you're going to tell us how. <laughs> this is laughable. You're trying so hard to do it like they do in the action movies, aren't you? What are you going to do? Torture me? You really think I, an acolyte of the Order of Blessed Agonies, would be scared of pain? I've done to myself far worse things than you could dream up. Hmm. So now what? Now we have to open the hub security door. I'm sure we'll figure something out. 
Feel free to question the prisoner. I'm sure you could benefit from his knowledge. You don't trust her. She saved my life. And yet, you don't trust her. You wonder what it is she's hiding, do you not? Quiet. You understand so little. I don't think he's going to give me anything useful, to be honest. Looks like you failed, old man. We're loose, and now you're locked up. I wouldn't count your chickens if I were you. There are many more to take my place. I hate to break it to you, but your guard's dead. Really? Doesn't that bother you? Should it? You even understand the situation? Of course. I don't think you do, though. Why? If you did, you'd know that my guard's condition may not be as permanent as you believe. He does seem to be dying over and over again, huh? It did seem like it was the same guard that was there when I first woke up and died to the same person. Stuck in some sort of a loop. Hmm. Can't you see that your order has abandoned you? This complex is completely evacuated. And the building on the surface is, too. Rubbish. This facility was too expensive to simply abandon as soon as work was complete. My brethren will return. So what's the deal with this cult? The deal? The deal is that the Order of Blessed Agonies has, exi has existed for centuries. We believe in the true way to purification. Purification through suffering. We practice the blessed agonies of the mind, body, and soul to wash ourselves of sin. And one day... One day what? Nothing. You've got some big agenda, haven't you? That's what this is all about. You gonna take over the world? Like some Saturday morning cartoon villain? I said nothing. Tell me about these blessed agonies. Why? Thinking of applying? Just tell me. I don't see why not. For an individual to be fully purified, all three aspects of themselves must experience blessed agony. The agony of the body, physical pain, beating, burning, and cutting. The agonies of the mind, boredom, fear, and insanity. And the agony of the soul, which is more refined. It's about destroying someone or something the subject loves utterly. Uh, utterly, relies upon emotionally. And you do all this to yourself again and again? The agony of the soul can only be experienced once. But apart from that, you are correct. This is insane. To you, maybe. But do you know the same peace as I? The same utter contentment that comes with the knowledge that you are of absolute purity? I don't want to talk about this anymore. Why are we being held here? Surely that should be obvious. You are held here to protect the secret that this complex exists. Then why didn't you just kill us? I would have done, had I received the order. But I did not. Then what do you want from us? My superiors know. In time, they will let me know, too. What work was Dr. Hardy doing for you? Why don't you ask her? She won't tell me. And you think I would? Oh no, young man. This is something you have to see for yourself. I'd hate to spoil the surprise. Who is the tall man in black? The one with the white mask. Ah, I see you've met the prince. You should consider yourself lucky. That thing is the prince? What the hell is he? I'm not inclined to spilling the secrets of the order to an outsider. Even if I were, very few acolytes are privy to the secrets known by the prince. And even the highest ranking members know only slightly more than I. Do you know who the man in red is? Who? 
a completely bald man in a red robe. Kind of like your red robes, but all torn up. Is he one of your people? I'm afraid I have no idea who you're talking about. All the acolytes of Chozo take very good care of their robes. I've got nothing more to say right now. Huh, it's interesting that he said the man, the bald man looks like he's wearing one of their robes, but all torn up. Could he have been a former member of the Order of the Blessed Agonies, or whatever they're called? Hmm. Alright, well, we're still stuck seemingly between the realms, which is not good. Did Dr. Hardy notice that we're between realms and everything's fucking weird and creepy? Or is it just me? Also, where is everyone? Alright, you're there. Oops, I tried to grab her again. Talk to her, don't grab. I think I saw the man you're so scared of. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure you have. What do you mean? I know you probably wonder what scares me about him. But I'm telling you, he just fills me with panic. No, I don't wonder. I don't. Really? I swear. Right, have you seen Sam? She said she was going to investigate the hub entrance. Okay. Dr. Hardy? Yes, Mr. DeCape? Go ahead. I saw some kind of monster. Sorry, I can't say that while being scared, which is what he seems to be, because I've already kind of talked about it with Janine. Like, <laughs> it's almost as if it just happened, like, I saw some kind of monster! No. I did see a monster, but it was a little while ago. It doesn't bother me that much now. Calm down. What did you see? He was like a man, but so tall and thin, like a, a stick man. A slender man. His face was just white, and he... There was blood everywhere. Pull yourself together, Mr. DeCabe. But the monster... Whatever you think you saw, it's gone now. You're safe. I wish... I wish I could believe you. Yeah, <laughs> you're safe. No, I'm fucking not. I'm safe for maybe the next ten minutes, but yeah. How's it going with the security door? Not wonderfully. As far as I can see, there are two security panels that must both be deactivated. One calls for a keycard, the other for a numerical passcode. After that, I think two unlocking mechanisms will be revealed. Both of which will need to be activated simultaneously. What do you think? In the absence of the keycard and passcode, I may be able to force my way through, given the right tools. Then again, maybe we could find the keycard and passcode lying around the complex. I'm just considering options right now. Alright, is there something I should be doing? Uh, you can help me find a way through the hub security door if you want. It seems that a keycard and a passcode are required. Alright, well... The uh, keycard is already dealt with, I just need the passcode. Which I'm guessing has something to do with the security room and my magnifying glass. Let's see if I can open any of these doors now that everything's all weird. No. Ah, still nothing but snow on here. Can I use a control panel now? No, still locked out. And this is probably still locked. Nothing. 
nothing but snow. Alright, well, I don't know how the hell I'm supposed to get the freaking passcode. What the hell is that? Does that say 287? Is that part of the passcode? On the wall? Do I need to go fully over into the other realm? How would I do that, though? Hmm. Ugh. It's a massive splatter of blood left behind, no doubt, when the guard was torn up by that tall man. All the disturbance is gone. Medical supplies that I still don't know how to use, of course. Anything on the desk worth a damn? Nope. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I need to go into the other realm, but I don't know how. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about this room. I can go in here now. Okay, that's probably it. That must be the symbol of the cultist. Yep. What if there's something behind it? Hmm, like a safe. Doesn't seem so. I can't mess with it. Looks like it's part of the internal network. Huh, anything on it? Probably requires a password, right? Looks like Canning's left some kind of environmental control program open. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Well, is there any reason not to just release all the security? Release? Release? Wait, wait, what did they say? This function is not available from this terminal. Okay, shit. Yep, alright, so this can only release level 1. Why would it have the options if it's not available from this terminal? I guess just to tell me that I can do that from some other terminal. There's a thermostat and cycle ventilators. What does cycling do? Cycling? Okay. Reset? Okay. Don't know why I'd want to do that, but alright. Looks like whoever ran this place didn't entirely trust whoever used this office. Alright, got some notes. I've got no use for a blank notepad. Oh, it's blank. The top pages are torn off, but judging by the indentations, someone wrote down a series of numbers I can't quite make out. Oh! Okay, I need, like, charcoal or a pencil. Shit, someone's gotta have a pencil, right? Come on, come on. It's a fucking, like, office. I need a pencil. I need a pencil. I need a pencil. Someone give me a pencil. Unless I use a lens? No. Desk. There aren't any drawers, and there's nothing much of interest on the desktop. God damn it. You're on a freaking desk. You should have a pencil. Hmm. Uh, I think I just took them? Yeah, okay. It's a thick stack of useless accounting reports. I'm not even sure why I picked it up. Okay, why did you pick it up then? <laughs> Why'd you pick it up? Wait, the staple may come in handy. I'll pry it out and throw the documents away. Oh, a staple. Great, I can use that for... Uh... I have no fucking clue. It's kind of small. Obviously, the cult isn't big on paperwork. This paper looks interesting. I'll add it to my journal. We live in the universe of technology, or the scientific realm, where magic is very sparse. Our shadow is the universe of magic, or ethereal realm, where magic and magical creatures are abundant. In olden times, it was easier for entities to travel between the realms, hence the old stories of fantastic creatures. The druid Kabadath, ah, I remember him, circa 55 BC created a bridging portal quite easily, using a comparatively simple ritual. 
Yeah, that was the problem, wasn't it? It was a little bit too simple. He thought he could control it. Since then, however, the background level of magic in the scientific realm has faded, and a ritual much larger in scope is required to transport any entity from one realm to the other. The ritual calls for the creation and sacrifice of a bridge, a living creature, with ties to both realms, usually an entity born in the scientific realm but later having their aspects imbued with magic. Hmm. Ties to both realms. That'd have to be Trilby, right? And I have seen a Trilby, but it can't be... I mean, it's 200, like, 200 years later. It sounds like it's gotta be Trilby. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, plot twist. Maybe the caretaker, the bald guy in the ripped up robes or whatever. Maybe that's Trilby. And it was Trilby visiting his past self that saved him in the third game and, and saved us now and... Yeah, I have no idea. When all three of the bridge's aspects, body, mind, and soul, are annihilated in conjunction, echoes of weakness ripple through the membrane between the realms and a portal can be opened. Exactly how long the portal remains open depends on the pusence of the bridge. What the hell? I've never heard that word before. Pusence. Interesting word. I'll have to look it up. Everything else is just useless building and accounts record keeping. Alright, someone's got to have a pencil. Come on. Alright, well, I'd hoped to end this episode at the end of the day, or the beginning of day three, but I have to go. So I'll have to resume my hunt for the elusive pencil later. I will find that pencil sooner or later. It will be mine. Alright, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.